Welcome traders to another tick mill earnings report preview with me Patrick Munley. Before we jump into today's report as always want to adhere to the risk disclaimer and most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views expressed by me are solely mine they're not indicative or representative of those held by tick mill UK or tick mill Europe limited. Okay let's jump into today's report and we are looking at block the parent of square we're looking for earnings which are going to be released after the close of trade in New York today. Earnings per share of uh, 17 cents on revenue of 4.38 billion. I would highlight there is a whisper number that the EPS could be as high as 19 cents. Investors really need to watch consumer related metrics, the sell side's consensus numbers and the company's management's comments at the prior quarterly earnings call to do a preview of Block's upcoming results. Expectations for Block's Q2 2022 earnings are muted, implying a low probability of a negative surprise for Square when it reports results this evening. Uh, Square's Q2 2022 results should still be poor as evidenced by the expectations of declines in both its top and bottom line for the coming quarter. On the other hand, Block still boasts significant potential growth in the long run, as seen with its total addressable market, or TAM, projections revealed at its investor day in May. Wall Street analyst consensus uh, financial projections point to Block's revenue declining 7.4% year over year uh, from 4.681 million in the second quarter of 2021 to 4.335 million in the second quarter of 2022 as per the S&P Capital IQ data. Assuming that the sell side analysts are right, uh, Q2 2022 will represent the second consecutive quarter of year over year top line contraction. The expectation of lower sales on a year over year basis for Square in Q2 2022 are reasonable, taking into account metrics relating to consumer spending and consumer confidence in general. A July 28th, uh, 2022 Reuters article noted that the growth in the US consumer spending for the second quarter of 2022 is likely at its slowest pace for two years. US consumer confidence has declined for three straight months uh, from May to July in this year. Given that the users of Block's cash app in general tend to be younger and less well off, the company's top line is more likely to be adversely affected by weaker consumer confidence and a reduction in consumer spending. Block is also expected to deliver weaker profitability for the upcoming quarter as per consensus estimates obtained from the S&P Capital IQ. Uh, Square's EBITDA is forecasted to fall by 62% year over year to 137 million in the second quarter of the current year. Similarly, Block's non-GAAP adjusted earnings per share is estimated to drop by 75% year over year in the second quarter of 2022. The expected sharp decline in the operating profit and the bottom line for Square in the upcoming quarter isn't a surprise. Costs relating to the integration of Afterpay and continued investments uh, to sustain long-term growth are expected to dampen Block's profitability in the second quarter. Net-net, uh, Block's second quarter 2022 financial results aren't expected to be pretty with both its revenue and earnings forecast to contract Euro on a year over year basis in the upcoming quarter. But on the positive side of things, Block's uh, poor near term outlook has been priced into its valuation, while its positive long term prospects do remain intact. Let's take a look at some of the statistical trading patterns that we can identify around uh, Block earnings. Square shares have moved higher in the immediate aftermath of earnings, 9 out of 12 previous reports. On average, the stock has moved up. 4.5% in the first day of trading after the company's earnings report. Based on the previous 12 earnings releases, uh, Square is more likely to trade lower one day after earnings for an average loss of 2%. On the average, the stock has moved lower by 5.1% one week after earnings. From a volatility perspective, options traders are pricing in an 11.5% move on earnings and the stock has averaged an 8.8% move in recent quarters. From a flow and sentiment perspective, there has been notable buying 4,747 contracts of the bullish $100 call expiring tomorrow, uh, Friday. Options order flow in general has actually been uh, bullish as well. Investor sentiment has 51% expecting an earnings beat. Share price has drifted 17.8% to the downside post its last earnings announcement. 
Uh, using the last 12 quarters of data, the average drift between earnings announcements is 4.7%. Let's pull up the chart here and, uh, and take a look and see if we can identify any near-term trading opportunity. Bear in mind we've got that bullish sentiment from both the options market and, uh, and this near-term uh, call buying. Let's take a look and see uh, where we could look to engage here. So from a technical perspective, we're putting in a, uh, a bottoming pattern here. And if we overlay the pitchfork, I'd like to see any move through the $92 level. I want to be engaged on the long side, initially targeting the projected trend channel resistance up as uh, 105.55. And then as this 92 area acts as support then, I think we can extend up into the uh, 121 area. And that would represent a symmetry swing versus the last upside move we saw um, in the back end of uh, February this year. So we saw that advance before uh, before we saw the, the next leg to the downside into that 55 swing low. The alternative scenario is we hold this resistance at the $91, $92 level. Any three-wave corrective move back in to test the 68 area as support. Again, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns. Still like to think uh, we can make a move through this 92 ultimately and get up to make a test of the 121. Notably, we have broken out of the weekly descending trend channel and held the weekly uh, high volume node there at 64.80. So looking for upside here, unless we get a really miserable outlook from, uh, from the earnings report. But for now, structurally looking to test 121 on the upside. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next time, thanks very much.